everybody. Special Agent 9 here with the Blackwater Bandits. We are an elite Red Dead crew here to bring you all the tips and tricks that we find in story mode and online when online becomes available. So let's get right into it and show you how to get through Chapter 1 of Red Dead Redemption 2. So when you start out, you are a member of the Dutch Vanderlyn gang. You are leaving Blackwater where all your money and all your stuff is because of some sort of job gone wrong. Now you're stuck up in the snowy mountains. There's a lot going on with the story of this game. We are not going to be covering most of it in this channel. If you want to know what's going on with the story of Red Dead, please subscribe to Frogman XDX. He is a gang member of the Blackwater Bandits. And he's going to be bringing you all the story mode goodness and tell you everything you need to know as far as that's concerned. So we're not going to cover that though. So we're going to fast forward and skip ahead. You are going to be out in the snow with Dutch for your very first mission. You're looking for supplies. What happens is you run into another one of your crew members out here and you end up going toward a cabin in the snow. You're not going to find very many supplies here, but you are going to find a whole heck of a lot of trouble. So get ready. You're going to leave your horses behind and you're going to approach this area where people are at. Dutch is going to tell you and the other guy with you to go hide. So you're going to go into the shed over here and hide while he tries to talk his way into this cabin that these people have taken over in the snow. At this point, you're starting to learn the basic mechanics of the game. You want to hit the RB button to take cover. While you're in cover, you can push up on the left joystick to look above um, something that you happen to be crouched behind, as you can do right here. Uh, what happens here is these people are going to recognize Dutch as being an outlaw, so you need to come up firing with your gun. To do that, you aim with left trigger, you shoot with right trigger. It's very, very simple. Here you're going to get a look at your weapon wheel. You pull that up by holding down LB and that allows you to select a weapon. You don't have very many to start out with, but that will change very, very quickly. So shoot all these people. Once you have shot all the bad guys, you will be able to go inside of the buildings and search around for loot. Searching for loot from buildings and other places, carriages, this is how you're going to make most of your money in Red Dead and find a lot of your items. So you definitely want to search everything whenever you find a building or a carriage or anything out in the world. You can make it a little bit easier on yourself by pushing both joystick buttons that puts you, it makes the world monochrome. Everything is black and white except for important stuff flashes blue. Items and animals will flash blue on your screen. So this is an easy way to search for whatever you're looking for and it'll help you find a lot more things. Make sure to climb the ladder and go up to the loft area of the cabin. There is some stuff up there. And you always want to look for ladders. You will find lofts and cellars inside of these buildings. Always look for that and always go up or down the ladder as needed because you will sometimes find great stuff up in the lofts and in the cellars because it's a little bit harder to get to. So at this point, you're done cleaning out the cabin. Dutch is going to tell you to go to the stable. You're going to get jumped by this guy. He survived the shootout because he hid from everything. And now you're going to have your first decision in the game. As we all know, the decisions that you make in Red Dead matter. Uh, they determine how the world reacts to you. They determine how the game plays out. So your first decision is right here. You can either kill this person or let him go. And there's going to be some sort of ramifications of that. So it's your decision. It's how you want to play your game. Whatever you do, something's going to come of it. So be aware of that. Every time you make a decision, you will have to face the consequences. 
So as I said, here's another way you can do it. Uh, we already killed him once in the first video you just saw. This is what it looks like when you let him go. He just runs off into the snow. You will make a comment as Arthur Morgan about that he's probably not going to survive. That is certainly not the case. You will definitely see this person again or have some sort of consequences from killing him. Something's going to happen because this is the first decision so you can guarantee it. There's also a horse here in the stable. You can uh, calm this animal down and ride him and he will become your first horse. Now at this point, uh, it turns out that there was another person hiding in the cabin. So there's a big cinematic dealing with that. Uh, you end up burning the place down as you can see and everyone rides away together with the supplies that they got and you with your brand new horse. We will launch immediately into another cinematic and another task. Uh, some lady's husband is lost in the snow or something and for some reason you have to be the one to go find him. So now you're riding in the snow with your new horse way up in the mountains to go find this joker. Again, anything you want to know about story mode Subscribe to Frogman XDX. I have a link to his channel in the YouTube description, so you can find out all about the story through him. You will have to shoot wolves at this point, coming back down the mountain. You will find wolves everywhere on the map. Uh, they come out a lot at nighttime, and you'll find them a lot in snowy areas. They're very dangerous, they strike very quickly, so be prepared to shoot them whenever you get the chance. up the next day and get a look at your journal and wander around a little bit but you are not free yet to make your own decisions you will be launched into another task as soon as you begin moving around and doing things in your temporary camp that your gang has set up you can see on your screen that you will have two yellow circles Yellow tasks um, move your story along. They help you get through story mode. These are all you're going to have at first. You will have white tasks that show up later, and we will talk about those momentarily. If you hover on the yellow tasks, you will see a brief description, perhaps who you're going to go meet and what they want you to do. Sometimes very little information, sometimes a little bit more. It just depends on what the task is. you're heading out with most of the rest of the gang you're gonna go and get involved in a huge shootout and this is fun for lots of reasons you get to kill a bunch of people and this is gonna be your first introduction to looting dead bodies uh, you can find a whole lot of great stuff from looting dead bodies so you never want to miss an opportunity to loot a dead body Search them all the time. If they have horses, search the saddlebags of their horses, and you can get a whole lot of great items this way. As you just saw, you will also be using your binoculars to look at the train. You can access your binoculars through the LB window. Hold down LB, hit right bumper, and then you can look at your items. You will always have binoculars after this point. They are useful for looking at animals, looking at places you're thinking about robbing, anything you want to do. They're always going to be with you from now on. dead bodies. There will be several times in Storm of when you will get involved in big shootouts like this. There's almost always time to stop and loot all the bodies. So at your first opportunity, when things have calmed down, stop, just loot all of the bodies. Take everything that you can get. You'll find recipe pamphlets this way that you can't find any other way. Uh, lots of good stuff to sell. So it's always a good idea to just steal everything in sight. After all, this is Red Dead Redemption. And we're in an outlaw gang. We're criminals, so embrace it and be a criminal. 
one of the guys who will try to escape. At this point, you get to work with your lasso for the first time. You will always have your lasso. It's also in your item menu. And you use it the way you would any other weapon. Hold down left trigger, aim on him. When the dot turns red, you can use right trigger to release and lasso people, animals. The lasso is actually very useful, so this is a good tool to have. The next task that you embark on will be hunting. Hunting is another thing that you're going to do a lot in Red Dead Redemption. Uh, this is how you get pelts. There are several legendary animals um, that you can have special items crafted after you kill them. So you definitely want to learn how to hunt and you're going to be doing so in this mission. You will also get your bow and arrow at this time. The bow and arrow is one of your most effective hunting weapons. You don't want to just shoot up every animal that you see. You'll destroy the pelts. Uh, you want to get perfect pelts. The bow and arrow will help you do that. And we will cover hunting a lot more in depth in future videos. You will want to crouch down while hunting a lot of times. Uh, in order to do this, all you have to do is hit your left joystick button. So you can see here you can also use your tracking ability. It is hitting both joystick buttons. You can find the trail of an animal and track animals this way. They will also flash blue on your screen as you get close enough to see them. Again, the two joystick buttons uh, go into your special vision mode. Very, very useful for lots of reasons. Hunting, looting, use it all the time. It's very effective. So in your next task, you will be robbing a train with the rest of the Vanderlyn gang. There are trains throughout the world of Red Dead. There's a big train track that runs all over the map. You will see trains all the time. You can ride the trains. You can rob the trains. There will be several missions where you're actually involved in robbing trains. Uh, you can take money from the passengers or the baggage section. And there's a lot of good stuff happening with train robberies. So this is going to be your first one. Everyone's all together here. And you can watch how it plays out. mission there are a lot of enemies to shoot and kill you will be responsible for stopping the train at one point again uh, don't forget to loot all the bodies there's lots of good stuff to be had you will have another cinematic and another decision to make uh, during this robbery so make your decision, carry on with your task, and now you're officially a train robber. You will find various notes and letters and things throughout the world of Red Dead. Sometimes these contain useful information, there might be tips about places to rob, you might find maps. Sometimes it's just going to be garbage. Uh, look at it, read it very quickly. And if it's something you actually need to know, um, the information will pop up on your map or you'll learn a recipe or whatever it is. You don't have to read every single scrap of paper in this game because if you do, you will not be able to carry on with a normal life. There's too much to read. Once the train robbery is complete, the gang is ready to move on. You no longer have to be in the snow and mountains. Everyone is packing up and leaving. There's a beautiful little cinematic here. You're not going to see a whole lot of it right now. And you're going to be going towards your new camp. This does signify that you have reached the end of chapter one. It's sort of like the tutorial that will officially be over once you arrive at your new camp with the gang. Okay, so this is where you're going to be at on the map. You can't see much of the map at this point, but it is something of a centralized location. More of the map will be revealed as you begin to explore the world. Horseshoe, Overlook, this is where your first camp is, and you're going to be coming here a lot to pick up various missions, uh, change clothes, all kinds of good stuff. So familiarize yourself with your camp. You're going to be here a lot. Okay, this is it. 
welcome home. Your camp is not very nice at first. You will have many opportunities to upgrade this camp. Uh, you have your own wagon here with some personal effects, pictures, mementos. There's a newspaper clip in here. Uh, this is where you can come to shave and change your clothes. Once you begin to upgrade your camp, you'll be able to get ammunition here. Briefly, we're just going to take a look at the wardrobe. There are some pretty saved outfits for you already. You can store five outfits on your horse. Now, this is helpful in case you're moving between different climates. If you go up into the mountains, for instance, it's very cold. You're going to want to have a cold weather outfit. Or it will have an effect on your health and on your game performance. So it's good to have a cold weather outfit stored on your horse, a hot weather outfit. There is an area of the map that is very hot. Um, and you know, an average outfit or two. Like I said, you can have up to five stored on your horse. So you'll be able to switch outfits anytime you like, as long as your horse is with you. However, there are more than five saved outfit slots. So you can build several custom outfits, put a few of them on your horse, and then access your custom outfits from your camp, or a hotel room. Um, there's several places in the game where you can look at your outfits and change your new outfits whenever you like. As I said, you can also shave in this game. You can totally customize the way your Arthur looks. You can have them clean shaven, you can have big mutton chops, you can do what you like with the facial hair. There are also barbers located throughout the world uh, where you can cut and style your hair. You cannot do that at camp, but you will find a barber in Valentine. There is also a camp ledger where you can contribute money. Uh, there's a butcher where you can contribute food to the camp. Don't be surprised if you feel like you're the only person in the gang contributing because everyone feels that way. I'm pretty sure none of these other deadbeats are doing anything. Uh, however, there is a pot of stew. You can get the stew daily and get uh, helped up and get a little buff from that. So, you can have that. Butcher also has some unique upgrades. Uh, he can make you new satchels. He does. He has a lot of camp upgrades. Uh, you get these through perfect pelts of various animals and perfect carcasses in some cases. So again, we're going to go into hunting way more in depth and tell you all about how you can get some of that. So you can take a look at it here and get an idea of the kind of animals you're looking for. By the way, you're looking for just about every kind of animal. <laughs> So if you want to upgrade your camp, you're going to have to do a whole lot of hunting. You do already have a lot of items. You have a bandana. You can wear this um, while you're out in the world committing crimes. You're not as easy to identify if you have on your bandana. You also have your own little campfire. So you can set up a tent and a campfire anywhere in the world in order to do crafting or to get some rest and we will have a separate crafting video to talk all about that. Down your right d-pad arrow in order to access your satchel. There's lots of items in Arthur's satchel. Uh, you'll have crafting materials here, various herbs and pelts and things. You'll have tonics and food. You'll have all of the documents you've collected, letters and recipes and this kind of thing. So take a look at your satchel, see what you've got, and uh, make sure to, to look at it from time to time and see what kind of items you're picking up. So that's it. You are done with chapter one. At this point, you can go out into the world of Red Dead. You can hunt animals, you can rob things, you can do your missions. You can do anything you want, free play. Um, as I told you earlier, there will be white circle missions that pop up on your map from time to time. Usually they start out as question marks. As you approach these people and do jobs for them, you may get to know them and then they will reappear on your map as initials. The white quests are side quests that you can do. Uh, sometimes it's just a simple task. You'll usually get items from this. Sometimes you won't get anything at all from the people you help. These are not the same as the random events that you will find 
on the side of the road, out in the world at large, sometimes in the middle of nothing. These are very small white dots that pop up and you usually hear some sort of dialogue. These random events um, also can yield you information or items. Sometimes you won't get anything out of doing them. It's just a matter of how you want to play the game and now you can do whatever you like at the end of chapter one. You can pursue your story mode missions. Anything you want to do, the world is wide open to you. So subscribe to our channel, stick with us, and we will show you tips and tricks. We'll show you where some of our horses are located, some of our weapons. You'll find out a lot about story mode. And as we head into online, we'll show you how to be as elite and badass as you can possibly be in the world of Red Dead Redemption online. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Once again, this has been Special Agent 9. I'm with the Blackwater Bandits.